Algebraic Proof, Lesson 2.5. We've got six previous videos for Chapter 2, and they're linked in the description with other helpful videos. A proof is an argument that uses logic, definition, properties, and previously proven statements to show that a conclusion is true. And if we've solved an equation in algebra, we've done a proof. In an algebraic proof uses algebraic properties, such as the properties of equality and the distributive property. Now I want you to remember that numbers are equal and figures are congruent. So if we have point A and point B, so we have AB and we have the measure of angle C, those are measures. If we've got a segment AB and angle C, those are figures, okay? And those would be congruent, all right? We'll talk about that more in a minute. So, I'm going to back up so you can see all this. We have these properties of equality, and these can be used as justification in a geometric proof. So, we've got the addition property of equality, which says if A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. So, we would use it to solve for X in a situation like X minus 2 equals 8. We would just add 2 to each side of the equation. That would make the negative... 2 and the positive 2 cancel out as a zero pair here, so we'd end up with just x equals 10. We're just using an inverse operation. If you don't remember how to do that, you need to know how to do these. That was in Algebra 1, Chapter 3, and there'll be a link to that chapter so you can watch those. The subtraction property of equality says if a equals b, then a minus c equals b minus c. And just as we used addition as the inverse of this subtraction here, we would use subtraction as the inverse. See? If we've got a 5 plus x equals 9, well, then we can just subtract 5 from each side of the equation. This becomes a zero pair, and we're left with x equals 4. For the multiplication property of equality, if a equals b, then a times c equals b times c. When we have 1 fourth x equals 8, we just use the reciprocal of 1 fourth as 4 over 1, which is the coefficient, and we'd multiply both sides of the equation by this reciprocal, and 4 over 1 times 1 fourth, this is 4 over 4, that gives us 1x, this gives us 32 over 1, which is 32, so we know x equals 32. So we're just using multiplication to solve for x, and that is also covered in Chapter 3 from Algebra 1, if you need to see that. For division, if a equals b and c doesn't equal 0, then a divided by c equals b divided by c. If we've got 8x equals 24, this is multiplication, we can do an inverse operation of dividing both sides by 8, since this is multiplied by 8, and we get 1x equals 3. Okay? Just remember, you can't divide by 0. And if you remember the distributive property, if we've got 2 times 3 plus 4, we can do 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. That means we have 6 plus 8. That means we have 14. Okay? We just distribute that 2 to everything inside of the parentheses. All right? We have the reflexive property. That says A equals A. So think of a mirror. It's just reflecting across, okay? So we have the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 1. And that was Algebra 1, 2.10c, and it's also linked in the description. The symmetric property of equality says if A equals B, then B equals A. If we have N equals negative 5, we can swap places and do negative 5 equals N. So just think of changing places for the symmetric property. That was also in Algebra 1, 2.10c. For the transitive property, it says if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. See, if A and B are the same value, and B is the same value as C, well then A is the same value as C. If we've got the measure of angle 1 is congruent to the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 2 is congruent to the measure of angle 3, well then that means measure of angle 1 is congruent to measure of angle 3, doesn't it? So it's like a three-step swap. Okay? The substitution property of equality says if A equals B, then B can be substituted for A in any expression. So if X equals 3 and Y equals 6, 
and we've got this xy equals 9n, we can put 3 for x and 6 for y and do 3 times 6 is 18 and 18 equals 9n. We just use our division property of equality and can divide both sides by that coefficient 9, can't we? And we get 2 equals n. So just think of a one-step swap, okay? And we've learned that if we start with a true statement and each logical step is valid, then our conclusion is valid. When writing a proof, it's important to give justifications to show that every step is valid. For each justification, we can use a definition, a postulate, property, or a given piece of information. So a justification means good reason or proof, okay? We can solve an equation in algebra and write a justification for each step. We have negative 5 equals 3n plus 1. That's our given equation. We can use the subtraction property of equality and subtract 1 from each side of the equation. We have a plus 1, we'll do a minus 1. And that creates a zero pair on the right here. And negative 5 minus 1 is a negative 6, so we're left with negative 6 equals 3n. Now we can use the division property of equality and divide both sides by the coefficient 3, and we get negative 2 equals n when we simplify it. And then we can use the symmetric property of equality and say n equals negative 2 and just have them swap places. Emma's favorite cereal has 102 calories per serving. The equation C equals 9F plus 90 relates the grams of fat, F, in one serving to the calorie C in one serving. So how many grams of fat are in one serving of the cereal? We solve the equation for F and justify each step. So here we've got C equals 9F plus 90. We use substitution. We know that C is 102. So we have 102 equals 9F plus 90. We can use the subtraction property of equality and subtract 90 from both sides of the equation. That's going to create a zero pair here. And we're left with 12 equals 9F when we do the 102 minus 90. So now we have 12 equals 9f. We can use the division property of equality and divide both sides by the 9 coefficient. And when we simplify it, we get 4 thirds equals f. We can use a symmetric property of equality and flip it around to say f equals 4 thirds. OK? Like algebra, geometry also uses numbers, variables, and operations. Segment lengths and angle measures are numbers. So we can use these same properties of equality to write algebraic proofs in geometry. We can solve an equation in geometry and write a justification for each step. So here we have points A, B, and C. If we go all the way across from A to C, it's 5x minus 4. AB is x plus 3, and BC is 2x minus 1. So we know that AC, the whole thing, is equal to AB plus BC. That's the segment addition postulate. That's our justification. AC from here to here is 5x minus 4. AB is x plus 3, and BC is 2x minus 1. We need to add these together. Using substitution property of equality, we put them into this form of an equation. Now we can simplify it. And if it's really hard for you to add these two together, you could stack them. We have x plus 3 plus 2x minus 1. If we have a positive 3 and we take away 1, we have a positive 2. And if we have an x plus 2x, that gives us 3x. So now we have 3x plus 2. So now we have 5x minus 4 equals 3x plus 2. We can use the subtraction property of equality and get rid of that 3x on both sides. We do a minus 3x and a minus 3x. That's going to give us a 2x minus 4 is going to equal a 2. This created a 0 pair here, didn't it? Now, we still need to solve for x. We have a minus 4 there. We can use the addition property of equality to add 4 to both sides of the equation and create a 0 pair here. Now we have 2x equals 6. We can use the division property of equality and divide both sides of the equation by that 2 coefficient, and we get 1x equals 3.
okay? So we gave all our justifications in the red there, see? And we've learned that segments with equal lengths are congruent and angles with equal measures are congruent. So the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties of equality have corresponding properties of congruence. So we've got these properties of congruence. Notice a little yellow pointing hand means you probably should write this down, okay? So for symbols with the reflexive property of congruence, remember we're gonna think it's like a mirror, we can write reflex period, prop period of, and then the congruent sign. So we could do figure M is congruent to figure M. And an example in writing it would be like segment AB is congruent to segment AB, okay? The symmetric property of congruence, remember, we're gonna think changing places. We can write it as sim period, prop period of, and then the congruent sign. If figure A is congruent to figure B, then figure B is congruent to figure A. We can write it like this if it's angles. If angle one is congruent to angle two, then angle two is congruent to angle one. And then the transitive property, remember we're gonna think of like a three-step swap. We can write trans period, prop period of congruent sign. If figure A is congruent to figure B, and figure B is congruent to figure C, then figure A is congruent to figure C. If we were talking about segments, we could say if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, and segment CD is congruent to segment EF, then segment AB is congruent to segment EF. Reflexive, symmetric, and transitive are properties of equality that have corresponding properties of congruence. Okay, and here they are. All right. We can identify the property of equality and congruence that justifies each statement. So here we have the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle one. Well, that's reflexive. That's like a mirror, isn't it? It's the same on one side as the other. Segment XY is congruent to segment VW. So segment VW is congruent to segment XY. That's symmetric. Angle ABC is congruent to angle ABC. That's reflexive again. Angle one is congruent to angle two and angle two is congruent to angle three. So angle one is congruent to angle three. That's transitive. 2 equals A, and A equals B, so 2 equals B, that's transitive. And AB equals CD, so CD equals AB, that's symmetric. We also have a roots rule. This wasn't in your book, but I figured I'd throw this in because it could be helpful. You want to write this down. If A equals B, then the square root of A equals the square root of B. Positive square roots of equal quantities are equal. And there's a powers rule. If a equals 7, then a squared equals 7 squared. The squares of equal quantities are equal. And these are statement rules, and we've talked about these a little bit, but here they are in a nutshell. A theorem must hold up under all tests. A statement is either true or false. It can't be both. If a then b is true, doesn't mean if b then a is true. The converse doesn't have to be true, okay? If P then Q is true, doesn't always mean if not P then not Q is true, all right? So remember that numbers are equal and figures are congruent, okay? Segments, angles, those are figures. Our next lesson is geometric proof, 2.6. We're going to actually do some two-column proofs, okay? There's a lot of notes in this one. I hope you were able to get them all. If not, maybe you can go back and rewatch the video and pause it, if you haven't already. And I hope you're doing well. I'm proud of you. I'll see you next time. Bye.